So I've got my timber that I'm going to use to make the dog bed. As you can see, it's all different sizes. But uh, I've picked this one because I already had this and two because it's Jarrah and the room I'll be putting it in is predominantly Jarrah. So I thought, yeah, let's go with that. It should look good. So at the moment it's just big chunks of wood. So the next stage is to plane it all down. So I've got some nice flat edges to work from, then rip it and uh, then thickness it. I've picked my longest piece of Jarrah and popped it on the jointer and then set my roller stand out there so it just touches the bottom of the timber as it goes past. Jarrah is a fairly heavy timber and I don't want it tipping as it comes to the end of the jointer. I've saved you all the boring parts of the planing, thicknessing and gluing and sanding up to 180 at least. Uh, I will do more sanding once it's stuck together. Okay, but now what we have are our back, front, sides and legs of the dog bed. So that's going to fit together with one of these legs at each corner. The legs will sit like that effectively, halfway between and likewise the front and back will do that like so and that'll just raise the bed off the floor a tiny bit you're looking at the top of the bed at the moment going to have a plywood base i wasn't sure how best to do the legs but i've decided what i'm going to do after i've put the mortises in them for the joinery i'm just going to chamfer the edges top and bottom so we're left with not a point because you know we don't want anybody getting hurt in fact that's exactly why we want the chamfer i'm putting a mark 30 millimeters from the bottom of each of these legs and that will be in line with the bottom of the front and back and side panels i'm going to number all of these so as i know where they go back to later on I've set up a little stop block, uh, or even a jig if you like really, to allow me to cut my ends on my legs. Uh, this is a little test block I just used, and it seemed to work well. Basically the block just sits up against there. I make a small 45 degree cut, and so on, and so on, until it's finished. Uh, yeah, worked well on the test piece, so let's do the real thing. I very nearly forgot to film this bit. Okay, so I've got a chamfer bit in the router table. And I'm passing each of my legs over, taking a chamfer longwise on these corners here. So I don't know if you can see the pattern I'm ending up with. But basically it just stops it from being sharp. When it's all assembled, no one's gonna get hurt on it, especially not my dog. And after all, it's his bed. So you can see I've got the ends done like that and now the sides are chamfered so they're, they're very crystally looking legs. This area here is the cutout for the dog to get in and out of the bed but I don't want them to be sharp corners so I'm just going to, when I say cut out, I didn't actually cut it out I just used shorter pieces of wood rather than waste that but now I'm just going to cut a round over on these at either end with the jigsaw Now what I'm going to do is round over the tops of the front, the back and the sides. The fronts, sides and legs are all done. On the inside at the bottom I'm going to put a strip of wood towards the centre, a decent length one, and that will support the base. I'm also going to put a small leg in the middle of the base so it doesn't bow in the middle when the dog gets in. These look good. Excellent. And I think this presents the perfect opportunity to use my Bridge City block plane as a thicknesser. 
first real world usage for it, really, <laughs> as a thicknesser. This is exactly what it's for. What I'm doing is I'm setting these little side gliders or runners to the thickness of this piece of wood beneath it so I can then transfer said thickness over to the other pieces of timber and they'll all be the same thickness. This is of course the thinner one. There we go, that's the, that one's set. Man, I love this plane. This is quicker than firing up the thicknesser, it really is. To allow for the width difference between the boards and the legs, I'm going to clamp them up on top of another board. And that way, while it's being clamped, the weight of the board won't be hanging on the leg joints. It'll be supported underneath instead. I've glued up my front and back here. So now it's time to add the sides. Little mallet I made for tapping in things like this. Right. Now that it's been glued, I'm just gonna check it for square before I clamp it. 70, 176. Oh, perfect, it's square. Ah. Okay, last night while you weren't looking, I snuck in and I joined these two pieces of plywood together with dominoes. I've had them clamped up overnight. This is my old dive belt. I've put that here to stop it bowing up in the middle. Not needed so much when you alternate the clamps like I've done here, but still a handy thing. And a heavy thing, let's get that out of the way. And over here, this little piece is a bottom leg. And that's going to go in the middle of the bed just to stop the whole thing from bowing in. Now in order to get this base to fit in the bed I'm going to have to make allowances for the corners of the bed frame. As you can see the legs have this sort of step coming into the interior of the bed so I'm going to cut a little diagonal off the base in each corner to make allowances for that. It also will allow for a little bit of airflow around the base of the bed, not much, just a little bit. I'm going to use my marking gauge just to get that depth there and I will transfer that onto the corners and then uh, cut them on the diagonal. I've dialed in an extra two millimeters on here just to allow a little bit of clearance and so all I'm going to do is come along to the corners I'm just going to pop that off the edge there so I can go down all the way and I'm just going to do a little mark like that and a mark like that so we get a little cross in the corner and then I'm going to cut on the diagonal through there. So there's my 45. I'm just going to put that in there like so. Yay! Okay, time for a test fit. What I'm doing here just putting a bit of a chamfer on the edge of the base so as I pick it up it's not sharp to me to handle and also later on when it's in the bed um, should for some reason the dog manage to find a way down to get a piece of claw or the tip of his tail down the edge which I doubt because there's not going to be enough of a gap but if so it won't have, won't have a sharp edge just here. It's going to take my file and just run it along the edge at a roughly 45 degree angle and that just takes the sharp edge off. I've done that all the way around. 
and so there we are that's the base in the bed and if we have a look down here you can see the little cutouts we've just made to allow clearance for those corners like I say I left a couple of mil extra space a couple of reasons for that more airflow uh, and also so this doesn't rub against here and they don't scratch each other apart I am going to put some pocket holes in the base of the bed to screw it to the frame just for a bit of rigidity and we still have a little leg to go on the bottom in the middle here so this doesn't bend in the middle okay so we're at the final point now I've just got to give it its final sanding, remove any assembly marks where I've drawn little lines to identify the parts. And when it's all looking pretty schmick, I'm going to give it a coat of water-based polyurethane. Well, a few coats of water-based polyurethane, and we'll be good to go. The bed is very nearly finished now. I've put on three coats of water-based polyurethane, very thin coats, uh, so that's gone on nice and smoothly. Gave them a little sand between each coat. At this point, I could, if I wanted to, uh, give it a final sanding with a 400 grit and wax it and buff out the wax. But I don't want any reason for my dog to chew on it. And uh, my waxes contain things like beeswax and other things that I'm sure he'd love the smell of. So I won't do that. I'll just leave it as plain polyurethane so he doesn't start licking at the bed. Oh, there we are. There's his little mattress to go in it. I've left some space around the edges so I can tuck blankets around that so I can take the blankets off and wash them. And it's a lot easier than trying to wash the cover of this and a lot warmer for him in winter, which was the whole point of this bed in the first place. Let's take it up to the house and give it a test run. This is where I'm going to put the dog bed, just down here. One of the great things about Jarrah is that it's quite heavy. I've popped little rubber feet, little adhesive feet, on each of the legs and uh, with the weight of the bed and that it should keep it quite still once it's in place it should not slide around plus it's butted against two corners that always helps okay thanks for watching I've tried to keep the video as quick as possible, so I've skipped over a few things, such as sanding and thicknessing. Um, there are other videos available where I do that, and other people as well, obviously. But if you would like to see that sort of thing in future videos, and don't mind the extra length, let me know in the comments. As you can see, I've moved the bed into the games room. He wasn't happy <laughs> in the dining room. <laughs> um, it just He just didn't like it. So uh, yeah, he's quite happy here though. This is an easy project to make. Lengthy in that you'll be waiting for glue to dry and uh, your varnish to dry. I don't recommend using an oil-based polyurethane or a varnish that has a strong smell. It'll take a long time for that smell to come out of the wood and your dog with a stronger sense of smell than a human is not gonna like that. It'll put them off using it. Hence me using water-based polyurethane. You could also go with something like a linseed oil, uh, take a few days longer to dry than this did. But then I've left this in the workshop for a week anyway, a full week, just to make sure it didn't stink. It doesn't. And it's, it's good. And he's liking it. All the best. Have a great day. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.